I was a big fan of American Dreamer, but as intense as that film was, Unhinged makes it seem like an after school special. Um, <laughs> What is it about this theme of disgruntled, middle-aged American men that interests you as a filmmaker enough that you have visited the subject twice, you know, consecutively and seem to be pushing further and further into some dark territories? And also, do you set out to surprise audiences with your choice of leading men, whether it's Jim Gaffigan for American Dreamer or Russell Crowe for Unhinged? Um, I, you know, I guess first question, you know, I mean, I think that I tend to gravitate towards, um, you know, very sort of focused personal stories that are set against the backdrop of topical issues, let's say, all the way back to the Joneses. I think that, you know, like where you have a kind of a, of a limited scope of a personal story that sort of takes place against these kind of zeitgeist issues of the day back then that was you know, kind of conspicuous consumption and things like that. And I think American Dreamer and Unhinged both, I let's say, fit into that as well as kind of um, my fascination with people that kind of dwell on the um, uh, on the edge of, of you know, uh, let's say questionable morality. And, um, you know, obviously Russell takes that to a whole new level on Unhinged. But, but I mean, I think that, I just kind of, um, you know, kind of go towards the things that I like, you know, and, and if there's a project that comes up that, that I didn't write, that I feel like I have to make the film, then, then I go for it, you know? And I, and I thought, I felt that way with Unhinged. I felt like um, it was an opportunity to kind of um, let loose a little bit with, uh, with the scale of the destruction and, you know, fun, you know, that's fun as a filmmaker to kind of, you know, to get to have those kind of toys to play with. And, and, and yet at the same time, you know, to work with, with, you know, really the entire cast, but really, you know, um, an actor that, that brings the level of experience and, and, and talent and everything that Russell brings to the table, just, you know, how do you, how do you not get excited for that, you know? Yeah. Um, was he, th this seems like a surprising role for him to take, or at least it's been a long time since we've seen him play someone this, I'm going to say it unhinged. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> talk to me about, uh, about working with him to find the character, not only just coming off the page of, uh, of Carl Ellsberg's script, but just in terms of what you wanted to get out of the performance in the picture. Well, you know, when you're casting a film, you kind of, you know, you make your wish list, you know, and, and there's always a few people at the top that you're going to kind of take a shot at that you don't really think that, you know, maybe you don't think you have much of a chance, you know, and, and Russell was right there at the top. Like they, when they said, who do you think would be, you know, who's your top choice for this role? I just thought Russell Crowe would be perfect for this. So they sent him the script and, and he and I met and, you know, it was kind of a initial kind of, um, feeling out process, trying to kind of, you know, see how the chemistry felt. And, and then that night he actually watched American Dreamer. And the next day we talked again. And I think that it was that film that, that, that really got him interested in diving into this character with me in terms of trying to figure out, you know, how do you, how do you play a character who's lost all humanity, you know, and, and, has gotten to this point where his only, his, his, the only way he feels like he can be heard is through, as he says in the movie, you know, violence and retribution. And, and we just kind of dove into that together and, and, and you know, uh, uh, kind of looked at what is it that's making people drive a vehicle into a crowd of people or take an automatic weapon, you know, and fire onto a, a crowd of people that seems to be happening all the time these days. And it seemed like, this sort of uh, idea of feeling invisible, feeling like they'd lost their voice and feeling this almost nihilistic um, perspective in terms of having lost faith in all the institutions that maybe they thought were, were, were there to, to protect them and to, and to you know, kind of be there for them. And they just have hit 
this place where they feel invisible and, and, and develop this rage, which turns to violence. And kind of finding that with Russell was really, you know, one of the greatest, coolest parts of my job is getting to do that. You know, that was, that was a lot of fun. Well, in terms of uh, not only building that with him as an actor one-on-one, -on -one, but in shooting some of those, the more intense physical scenes, like with Karen Pistorius, I mean, I was uncomfortable watching that as an audience member because the, the way it was shot, very convincing and, and brutal. Uh, was there a lot of table talk about like, you know, we're going to, we're all friends, we're, we're professionals, we're going to just go through this together, but, you know, if we need to hug it out afterwards because it, it looked very real. Yeah, I mean, look, that's why, you know, actors are, that's why actors act, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're able to do these things, you know, they're able to, 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 you know, we had some real pros on this film and, and, you know, all of them, you know, Gabe and Karen and Russell and, you know, they really, they were able to turn it on and turn it off. And, and we had a very light, easygoing set, believe it or not, where, I mean, oh. seriously, it was really the, the, you know, considering the environmental issues we were dealing with, in New Orleans during hurricane season, which is just a whole nother, you know, r ridiculous um, uh, set of circumstances, let's say with a hurricane and lightning delays and the heat index that was over 105. Um, you know, I think we we're, maybe all of that just sort of galvanized us into this, you know, into this mentality of we're all in this together. And, and, you know, the actors were great. I mean, there was never any kind of, um, uh, you know, taking, anything that was that was happening on camera and and not being able to sort of turn the switch off once we cut you know wow well finally i do want to ask about the the fact that this is going to be if i'm not mistaken the first major studio release to come back to mainstream theaters since the lockdown what was that conversation like i mean how were you approached to say you know unhinged is going to be the film and what was your reaction to that well you know, Mark Gill called me. We were supposed to release, I think, September 3rd or 4th or something. And, and he called me and, and said, um, you know, I've got this idea. You know, I think that we can get in a couple of weeks before, you know, one of the one of the huge releases and, and really try to be the first film out. What do you think? And, you know, immediately it's a very polarizing thing in that super excited, A, you know, maybe there's a, there's a way to get in there and take advantage of, you know, a slot that, that might get more eyes on the film, which is exciting. And then the other side of that is, you know, you, you want to know that people are doing the right thing to be safe, to, to make it, you know, you don't, I don't want my film to be something that causes anybody any, any problems. And, you know, I think, you know, what Mark did was, you know, go into great detail about, what the studio, the, uh, the studio and the theater chains and the, the local health departments, you know, and governments were doing to try to ensure that once the, once the theaters opened, they would be safe. And I think everything that I've seen up to this point has shown me that, that it's, it's uh, I mean, when you've got 30% capacity, you've got disinfectants between screen, uh, between showings, you've got different screens so that each one, can rest longer and you know i mean it, it, it really we're a lot closer at the supermarket to people than we will ever be at the movie theater at this point yeah and and do you see that as like what's your what's your kind of forecast for hope for the theater going experience do you think things are going to be so-called normal again or is this just where we are and where we're going to be i mean i don't know that i have a forecast as much as i hope that the 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 you know, communal immersive experience of going to the theater is always a part of our lives because it's such a huge part of our lives that, uh, you know, I, 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 I presume that those people that can actually kind of make those, make the right changes will do what they need to do to ensure that it's always part of our lives. Cool. Well, Thank yeah. You <laughs> yeah, definitely. Double fingers crossed. Um, all right, man. Well, thank you very much for, for talking uh, with me about Unhinged. Uh, it's, it's really quite a film. I just finished watching it a little bit before we jumped on and I'm, I'm still rattled. So uh, congratulations. Uh, I would say I can't wait to see what you do next, but I'm kind of afraid. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks for talking to me. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.